Hello War Gamers, I'm Vesa Ramnus and today I want to talk about broadsides and how they can be used in 7th edition 40k. Uh, before I get started though, I just want to say thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to let me know what you think about broadsides or 7th edition in general, please let me know in the uh, comments below. And uh, of course if you like the video, I think you know what to do. So, uh, overall, broadsides, still great. Uh, you know, they're awesome in 6th edition. You know what? Still awesome in 7th edition. Uh, there's a few tweaks here and there, though, that may change how you want to use them. Um, first and foremost, uh, they're scoring now, just like everything. And uh, I've said this in every one of my 7th edition videos, that uh, things being scoring changes how, they, how you play them. And uh, broadsides are no different. Now that they are scoring, you probably just want to have them hang out on a backfield objective. You know, they're, you're going to take them, they're going to be there anyway, you might as well put them on an objective, uh, particularly if it's in ruins or something like that, and uh, just have them camp that and claim it at the end of the game, or if you're doing a uh, accumulation style mission like they have for Nova, um, you know, they can definitely fill that role throughout the course of the game. Um, so that's a great asset for broadsides, really um, makes them stand out a little bit more. Um, the second big change is uh, that with the vehicle damage chart, and again this is something I brought up in several videos, that um, the changes to the vehicle damage chart have slight uh, impacts for what types of weapons you're going to want to take on broadsides and on riptides um, too. But for broadsides, it actually makes the heavy rail rifle a lot more viable just because it does have that AP1, which is what's going to allow you to um, get the explodes result of, uh, of a 7 on most vehicles. Um, the exception there, of course, being open top vehicles, which these guys can still explode um, even without being AP1 or 2. But in most cases, uh, you're going to want that AP1 in order to pop... Um, pop the vehicle. Uh, so there's a trade-off here. Do you want to have one AP8 shot or one strength 8 AP1 shot or four strength 7 AP4 shots? Well, um, in most cases I still think you're going to want to go with the four strength 7 shots and here's why. If you do the math on it, um, you end up uh, doing on average to something like a Night Titan um, more hull points per round of shooting with a um, with a broadside with missiles than a broadside with heavy rail rifle. Um, the only thing that really you're going to have a, a big difference in is um, a land raider. You're going to have a lot uh, a lot less chance to uh, do anything to a land raider with these guys because strength seven can't hurt armor fourteen, um, whereas strength eight can. Granted, in that situation, really where you're going to want is Melta and not rail rifles anyway, and so in all, I think missiles are still your primary choice here. Um, but, broad, uh, but heavy rail rifles definitely got better. So if you want to bring them, you should feel less bad about it now. <laughs> um, you should feel more confident in that, in that choice than you did in 6th edition. Um, and you know I'm not sure if I'd recommend that, but it's definitely a, a uh, okay option uh, now. So that's one change: is rail rifles are more viable now in seventh. Um, third change is the introduction of space wolves and the potential changes introduced by blood angels, which should be just around the corner. Um, with wolves having uh, drop pods available to them and all their allies. Uh, as well as uh, their incredibly fast cavalry units, you might see a little bit more of the redhead stepchild of broadsides, the twin-linked plasma rifle, uh, instead of the good old uh, smart missile system here. And the reason for that is, particularly with in, con with conjunction, in conjunction with a early warning override, is that that's really going to allow you to lay on the hurt on some deep striking or fast approaching uh, space Marines, right? So if you have, uh, you know, two strength six AP2 shots, that's going to be a lot more likely to kill something than four strength five AP5 shots. Um, and so because of that, you might actually start see, seeing people take uh, twin link plasma rifles in uh, wolf or potentially blood angel heavy environments 
um, or in the competitive scene depending on how the meta kind of turns out in the next few months here. But for right now I think you're still probably going to be okay with uh, Twin Link Smart Missile Systems. Tower hurting uh, in the meta as a whole uh, just because of some of the some of the recent uh, codex releases and changes in 7th edition. Um, but I think sticking with uh, Smart Missile Systems is probably going to be the right choice four out of five times. Um, you're just going to have those those few few instances where you wish you had the plasma rifles. And so if you do want to take plasma rifles, they might not be a terrible idea now. Um, but the real takeaway there is that you want to have early warning override on all your broadsides all the time. Um, if you are bringing broadsides without early warning override, early warning override, you're missing a big opportunity to lay on the hurt, uh, especially with the, the uh, prominence of uh, deep strikers and uh, things coming in on reserve with the meta the way it is. So definitely recommend early warning override on all your broadsides. The fourth and final thing I'm going to say about broadsides in 7th edition is uh, that the changes to detachments make the uh, firebase support cadre a lot more viable. Um, you know, in 6th edition it felt kind of dirty. In 7th edition it's just, you know, one of the guys. Uh, everybody has access to uh, pretty much whatever they want, right? With the way uh, CADs can be built and the introduction of all these other formations that are even built into the codices, not just um, data slates like the Firebase support cadre. Um, you know, the Orc release, the Space Wolves release, both of them had several formations that you could take that were, you know, in the same vein as the Firebase support cadre. So that's, you know, completely kosher now. So I would definitely take it. Uh, it's free tank hunter and free preferred enemy space marines, which for broadsides doesn't mean much for hitting, but it does mean that you get to re-roll wounds of one. Um, re-roll re wound rolls of one. And so that is a huge asset. Um, you're going to be wounding a lot of things on two-ups anyways, and so that almost guarantees you, uh, you know, the majority of your wounds. So that's a huge asset, like I said. Um, and you're like you're going to be taking broadsides anyway, and a Riptide probably. So firebase support cadre, absolutely. Uh, right now I'm running a list that includes Empire as the base and uh, Riptide with two three-man units of broadsides uh, as the firebase support cadre. So uh, that's about it. Like I said, the big changes are going to want to have them to be back backfield scores. Rail rifles, not a bad option anymore. Uh, potentially even plasma rifles, you might see those, but definitely early warning override are things you're going to want to take now in 7th. And uh, broadsides, you know, if you have the points, if you're playing at a point level where this is viable, always take them as part of a firebase support CAD, right? It's awesome. So, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and happy wargaming.